Plans for opening the radio access network have been on the agenda for many operators for quite some time now. But more recently, we're seeing a number of actual open-run trials being undertaken globally. As the industry seems to be more and more mature to embrace this new approach, we're now focusing on the early takeaways from such deployments. To explore more, I'm now joined by Gil Hellman, Vice President of Telco Solutions Engineering at Wind River, and Intel's Senior Marketing Director for FlexRun, Daniel Lynch. Thank you both for joining. So, Dan, let's start with you first. What have you learned in your years of experience collaborating on deployments with customers like Verizon and Vodafone? Yanni, yeah, thank you, and uh, thanks also to Gil. Uh, before we start, I, I think a lot of credit has to be uh, given to Wind River for their first mover in this space. Um, we're, we're well over a decade now trying to break down this uh, this market and open it up for, for open run as solutions, and Wind River really embraced that early on when, when others didn't. So really, really credit to Gil, who, who was there from, from, from the outset. Um, for us, absolutely, you're transitioning from a place where it's it's a, a, a silicon um, seller, uh, you're dealing with one customer now to dealing with the whole supply chain. So a lot, a lot of understanding for, for, for us and how to do business differently. Um, I guess the, the number one learning that we, we, we've had is patience. It's taken a long time to go from that kind of whiteboard to to labs and proof of concepts uh true to uh, field deployments into now mass deployment so that takes a long long time and but fundamentally we, we believed in our, our architecture we believe in our architecture that the flex has pioneered and has really become now adopted by open ran um which really said that uh, from a cost point of view, it was super, super close, if not parity to what, what exists today and give massive TCO advantage. And it just took time for everybody to get on board with that, understanding that where the benefit come on TCO from uh, adding new functionality, uh, allowing you to deliver on the KPIs that the market really wants rather than waiting a couple of years for the, the, the silicon to come along and deliver on that. Um, and all the control, the control of the supply chain, visibility to the operators, and exactly know where their their hard earned dollars are being spent. So yeah, and it's took a long, long time. Patience is probably the number one learning for us uh, when engaging with the leading operators, like as you mentioned, Verizon and Vodafone. Thanks, Dan. And how about you, Gil? What has Wind River found out from open run rollout efforts? Sure. Thanks, uh, Yami. Uh, there are key three things. And uh, from our experience over the last uh, few years in rolling out the uh, Oran, um, one, I will say, starting with the ecosystem, making sure that there is a, a great collaboration, tight collaboration between all the different layers in the ecosystem, the infrastructure, the cloud, the REN application. Those are very, very important to do the integration and to collaborate before getting to the field, before getting to the operator lab and to the deployment. Second part, it's uh, the operator clearly defining um, the roles of everyone, the, the, you know, how the interaction um, with the operator, different operating uh, units, as well as across the, the different partners uh, that uh, basically comes together. Okay, those are very, very critical uh, pieces. And the last part, I would say it's the automation. We're talking about rolling out a very big cloud at scale, many sites. It's not like a few core clouds that are in, uh, you know, if you look at it, your one operator, they will have a handful of core location with a very big data center. But from a location perspective, there is not a lot, uh, you know, uh, to deal from uh, geographical location. When it comes to the RAN, we're talking about thousands uh, of sites in a small operator to tens and even hundreds of thousands of sites in a big tier one operator. So the automation uh, plays a very critical role from the deployment side to the basically day two operation. Without the proper automation, uh, it's just going to be very hard and very expensive. You're both making very interesting points. So let's turn to the challenging bit now. What do you see as being the most pressing issues facing telcos today as they roll out open run? Gil, why don't you start first? Sure, thank you, Yanni. Uh, there is a couple of them, uh, starting with the cost. Okay, we're talking about uh, many, many sites. 
Okay, so the cost very quickly, um, you know, um, become a um, very big issue. Uh, even if you take, for example, um, in a specific site, instead of, uh, for example, putting one server, you need to put two servers, or you need to put a bigger server to run the workload. So if uh, basically the cloud infrastructure, it's not optimized, the workload, it's not optimized, this increases the cost per site, and then it by multiplied by the number of sites. So this is a very big issue for the operator. And uh, second part, it's we're talking about geographically distributed tens of thousands of sites. So understanding what's happening and, and deploying this in day to operation, understanding what's happening in the cloud, what's happening in the run application, okay, aggregating all this data to a centralized location. And this is a, a, a very big uh, challenge that, uh, you know, a top of mind for operator and uh, which again will increase cost if not done correctly if it's not optimized and i would say uh, probably the most the biggest uh, thing top of mind for operators today it's the energy cost okay and this translates into two things we saw a significant increase in energy cost over the years especially in the recent years and with 5g it requires to deploy a lot more sites than with 4g okay not to mention the you know going to Oran, you're going into basically a data center model. So the importance of energy efficiency it's very critical here, both to drive the cost of energy of overall and the deployment now that you deploy a lot more sites. So basically, how the cloud infrastructure, the hardware, and the run workload works together to basically achieve the best energy efficiency but also to uh, reduce the energy compared to even, I would say, um, traditional uh, scenarios um, to reduce the cost, okay? And this is coming back to the initial point. It's about the ecosystem collaborating together. So if we're looking, for example, what Wind River and Intel is doing uh, for quite some time, you can see it in the orange standards, for example, we work very tightly on optimizing and working with the industry to optimize the energy efficiency of an open run system and also by the fact that it's open allowing you to achieve energy efficiency in other ways for example even the flexibility to run different types of workload at the far edge not just the video for example okay for example uh, when you can run multiple uh, bands like for example narrow band and c band together or when you can run a Mac application and a video together. So those are another way to achieve energy efficiency and drive the cost. And Dan, what's your view on the main challenges experienced by operators in their open run deployment journeys? Yeah, thank you. That's a good one. Um, it's a tough one. It, it varies per year. Right now, clearly, the, the whole industry is in a, a slight tightening mode. Um, so that's a lot of the open run deployments are facing that similar challenge. Um, and then kind of next click down, I suppose it, it's, it's a little bit of somewhat mixed messaging at times from the open run leading common service providers. What are exactly you looking for? And it, it's kind of diluting the R and D investment with, within the R and D, within the open and R and D players. So not quite sure exactly what, what they're looking for. Is it, uh, Pure cloud run, traditional run, and some sort of hybrid. So that maybe uh, is 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 they're starting to see that impact of, of that as well. Um, and then after that, it, it's it's when you go and disaggregate something, um, when you go for what is over well over a decade, two decades of, of a closed solution. It's that education within the operators of what what is their network doing, not at a at a macro level, but actually at a site by site level. What is that site? What does it need? What does it need during the summertime? What does it need during the winter time? What's the physical dimensions of it? What's its performance? All that stuff that that, that education within the operator community is is um, something they're wrapping their heads on is really, really good, and that that sets them up for success in in the uh, in the uh, long run as they really get a, a more granular understanding of exactly what each user, each network is doing. So it's probably the major challenges is that. The unbundling uh, at a commercial level, instead of buying everything from one vendor, you're buying it from a, a broad range of community. 
um, what, what's the SLA, who's the support, uh, who's delivering the cloud platform uh, or cloud open run platform? Is that one vendor? Is it a community? So all those things are, are, are just um, create a, a number of technical commercial challenges that the open run guys uh, are, are experiencing. But that's okay. I mean, that's part of the whole education process. That's how that tees them up for success as you go from really just a mobile broadband to a much more diverse network, a diverse set of business cases within a network. The, the operators who understand this stuff um, grapple with it and get through those sh- break the breakthroughs um, are, are really, really teed up for success in the, in the as we go into 5G, 5G advance and into 6G. So, as I understand, the collaboration between Intel and Wind River has been including a number of joint efforts in the past years. So, Dan, how else are you working together with Wind River to accelerate open run adoption? Yeah, as, as a silicon vendor, it, you'd kind of expect me to start with our silicon. Um, our Xeon Enhanced Edge with uh, VRAN a Boost. You, you expect us to start with Air, but actually that, that's kind of missing the point. When we work with Wind River, we have a very tight working relationship and we engage with the operators. We really understand uh, what they need uh, at a site by site, uh, what they need right now, what they need in the three to five to seven year time frame. Uh, and then an advocate, right? Really work closely with with River to talk to all the operators. And say, yeah, it's it's here, it's ready, it's 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 ready for prime time, uh, ready for mass deployment. Um, so that's number one. Number two is is really kind of understanding that this isn't this isn't a cloud per se as it exists right now. This is bringing cloud into the edge of the network and really shaving off all the you know sharp corners where it's fine for cloud but actually doesn't quite fit, it's not fit for purpose in, in the edge so whenever do a, and ourselves do a lot of work on that both at the software level uh, and also at the hardware level really working with the whole uh, hardware supply chain and say okay well that's that box is fine it's but it's it's too modular it's too big it's too power hungry this is the type of form factor you need and about ourselves and whenever we'll go and guide and provide information as to what, what they need the dimension for. Uh, and then we'll work closely as well with uh, uh, Windriver in, in ensuring that we get best known configurations, right? So that what what works in the initial leading operators, uh, that configuration is known good. We can validate against that. We can enable scale across the industry there. And then, then at the very, very end, you, you, you know, we, we we do a huge amount of software enabling uh, ourselves, our, our, our flex run roadmap. Um, you know, there's a huge amount of innovation goes there. We we'll continue to strive to to, to build uh, simpler software. Uh, you know, reduce the, the number of, of lines of code, uh, make it more readable, easier to adapt and change and uh, customize per deployment. Um, make that software. Um, consume less cores, right? It has to be more and more cost and power effective. Um, we work uh, closely with, with uh, Windriver in, in taking a lot of the uh, cloud power saving techniques like C states, P states, and bringing that into the ecosystem. Uh, and then also working on software to, 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 to deliver and develop and deliver uh, better wireless algorithms. So to really deliver better KPIs to the, to, uh, the users in the network. And at the very, very end, of course, we're working on delivering that silicon, that roadmap. And that's kind of typically where our competition enters in, but they forget all the other stuff that needs to happen before you deliver silicon and all the enabling that you have to deliver on. And Gil, what else are you working on with Intel in the open run space? So, uh, yeah, I I touched on it a little bit in the previous. Uh, uh, We do spend a lot of, uh, um, right now, of uh, our joint collaboration it's around the energy efficiency optimization. So it's optimization on performance, on, on resource utilization. So um, as I mentioned in the first uh, um, answering the first question, we're talking about a very large scale. So the, the amount, the cost adds up very quickly. Okay, as you basically multiply the number of sites. So one area that we work with Intel uh, be it between generation to generation of the processor, it's to optimize the resource utilization and constantly and uh, able to achieve operating the same capacity in higher capacity, consuming less resources. This is achieved through both optimization on the software and optimization on the silicon side. 
Second part, it's the energy efficiency part. So basically how we can opt both the silicon side and the, uh, the software side to allow you to operate the workload in a much uh, a more efficiency from an energy consumption. For example, tightening the performance uh, to be able to uh, change C states and P states, for example, in a very fast way. So you can dynamically make those changes as the application runs based on the workload, integrating it into, for example, AIML. So um, if you're looking, for example, operating the radio network, anticipating that there is going to be a downtime uh, in, a, in a number of users that are connected. So changing the, the energy profile and ability to change this energy profile back to a full speed, okay, very quickly with a very, very tight, uh, short latency. So we spend a lot of uh, time in the Oran community for example, in under Oran, uh, the, the energy efficiency under Workgroup 6 in Oran uh, Alliance, uh, lead, uh, led by Vodafone, Intel, and Windover together to basically characterize what is possible and try it and then bring it uh, into the commercial uh, uh, field. Indeed, there seems to be a lot going on in the open run field and specifically with the collaboration between Intel and Wind River. Any closing remarks from you, Dan? It's great to be here, Yanni. Thank you for the opportunity with yourself and, and, and chat to my good friend, uh, Gil. Uh, super excited about the, the, the year ahead. Um, you know, we have our new product, the Intel um, uh, Xeon processor with VRAM Boost, delivering on that 2X gen on gen uh, performance. And also with that, you know, simplification of the acceleration with VRAM Boost on die which delivers a further 20% power reduction. So super excited for that, very, very positive feedback from the market. And then also the uh, Flexion enabling a, a, a package that Winover delivers into the market that allow customers consume, evaluate, um, really understand what a Cloud RAN platform is all about. So great, great year, great uh, couple of years ahead for, for the Cloud RAN open RAN market. Thank you. And how about you, Gil? Any final remarks? Yes, uh, absolutely, Yanni. Um, I will say Oran is here, it's proven. Uh, it's a journey, as Dan mentioned, we embarked on many years ago. And in 2020, Verizon being the first pioneer uh, to deploy it. And um, by now we have Verizon and uh, we have Vodafone that deployed it, a few others that are uh, trialing it. The deployment, it's at large scale. We're talking tens of thousands of sites by now. And um, we're seeing KPIs from performance that are matching and even better than traditional RAN. And even from cost, we're seeing at par cost. And um, so I'll say Oran, it's here and it's proven. And as more operators will deploy it, it will drive a bigger economy of scales and uh, will drive better efficiency, better cost for everyone. Dan and Gil, thank you for joining us today.